What's up guys, it's Mike here and many people ask me to do another tutorial for Star Trail videos. Um, they want an updated version using LR Time Lapse 4 to make spiral star trails or vortex star trails. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. Uh, not much has changed from the first uh, tutorial that I did of LR Time Lapse 2, but I will happily address some of the issues I've seen people having. So let's get into it. First and foremost, for those that don't know what spiral star trails are, uh, basically we're mimicking our camera lens being slowly turned over the course of two to three hours and causing it to, you know, the, that twisting effect of the sky. It's really cool, it's fun to play with, and um, I like the way it comes out. So first, you gotta take pictures of the sky unobstructed, um, and you need about two to three hours worth of images. So for my star trails, which we have right here, I took 300 photos and my settings were 25 second exposure, f2.8. It was a Nikon D600 with a 15 millimeter fisheye lens and the ISO was 2500. I defished the fisheye and that's it. Here's the North Star. So once you do that, you don't have to put it in the middle by the way. You could put it to the left or the right as long as it's somewhere in the image though. And now once you do that, I recommend putting all your star trails in a folder by itself. You don't want any conflicting images when you go to do this. So put them all, all individually by themselves. Make sure they're numbered this way as well. This is very important. Zero zero one, you know, zero zero two, zero zero three, and so on. If you number it other ways, you're gonna have problems when you go to stack them in star stacks. It's you don't want them going out of order, it's gonna mess up the look of your star trails. So that's very important. So once we got that out of the way, let's open up LR time lapse. Okay, I'll upgrade this later. We can put this on basic workflow. Uh, we're not doing anything too, too complex here, so let's do that. Now, you wanna find that folder, which mine's on the desktop, Star Trails. It's gonna import the images. I was playing around doing a dry run, so that's why this box is here. So what I'm going to do is clear the metadata so all the images are cleaned out from scratch with no adjustments to them. If you see something weird in here for your images, you might want to do that as well. Okay, once that's cleared, we're going to continue our workflow starting with the keyframes wizard. Now with the new LR time lapse 4.7 or whatever you're on, um, sometimes this keyframe uh, wizard only puts your little diamond in the first one and not the last one. So make sure you check off the last picture as well. So we got the first and the last picture checked off. Once you do that, just hit save and it's gonna update the metadata. Once that's done saving, you're going to open up Lightroom. Go into library and make sure you're in the grid mode. Come back to LR time lapse and drag to Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, make sure this says add and then hit import. The two images I had checked off here are also starred here. Now what we want to do is change the rating system to keyframes. Go to develop 
and this is where we're going to crop in and simulate our lens being zoomed in. Now you don't want to overdo this. Um, you definitely want to make sure the North Star stays in the image. So if you do have the North Star, let's say off to the left or the right, you want to make sure it's somewhere you know, in the final image, in the most cropped image, I should say. So we're going to do this right about here. Should be good. Select of two photos. Got a photo. Save metadata to files. Let's go back to LR time lapse four. You're going to reload. Just hit no. You got this orange box that appeared right here. This is showing you that this image is a different crop than the rest. Now, when I did crop in, the one thing that I forgot to show you was that this was locked. You want this crop ratio to be consistent you know, with the other picture. So if you're taking a four by six photo and you're cropping in, you wanna make sure that crop is a four by six crop. You know, if I did something weird like this, oops. If I did that, and then the other picture is four by six, oh, they're both selected right now, it's gonna mess everything up. So you definitely, um, you definitely don't want to do that. You want to make sure that that's locked and that the crop ratio is the same as the rest of the photos. It's just cropped in tighter. So now what we're going to do is hit auto transition. And what this is doing is doing the math to slowly change the crop to change from all the way out here. And then you can see one by one, it goes in a little bit more, a little bit more until our final crop that we have here. This is what's going to cause the the star trails to spin. We don't need to use the flicker since we're not really making a time lapse. We're making a still image, so that's not necessary. So once you do that, you hit save. All right. Once it's done saving, we go back to library, change this to a full sequence. Select all the images, doing Command A on a Mac. And then we're going to go to Meta, read metadata from files. This is updating all the pictures with all this new information that we provided in LR Time Lapse 4. You can see the little crop. A little crop symbol right here that's indicating that all these images are being cropped so we know it worked and we just go to develop really fast and as I scroll through the timeline here you see they're changing so you get to like the last picture, it's the original size. And once you get to this point, you're ready to export them. You want to make sure they're all selected. File, export. Put them in a new folder. Um, I'm putting them in a folder called Star Trail Cropped. And I would use the original file number. You could change the, the name of it if you want, but make sure, like I said, 001, 002, something to that nature. Like it, it's very important. And then pick your, your size uh, for these. We'll just make them 20 inches wide and the resolution 300. You could do whatever size you want. Uh, I would just keep the settings like this, do width and, you know, resize width and height, and then, you know, pick one that you want to be the largest side, and then hit export. I'm not going to hit export just because 
I've already done so. So I'm just going to hit cancel for now. Here's my my cropped images. So now we can actually minimize this. We're done with this. And we're going to open up star stacks. You're going to take those cropped images, select them all, drop them into star stacks. You can have a lot of fun here. I highly recommend using comet mode, long trails, and you totally get different effects if you use reverse or the non-reverse. I like to use gap filling and you just hit the start processing. Now this is going to start the spiral effects. I will show you the final image right here and in reverse order. So, you know, it changes it up slightly. One looks like it's going in and the other one looks like it's coming at you. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to cancel this since I already have one done. All right guys, that's how you do the spiral star trails. And on my next video, I'm going to show you guys how to blend those spiral star trails with your foreground. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.